Hello there, Eric here, and I'd like to share with you some exciting news in the AR VR world that came out just yesterday, and it revolves around the hand tracking and this company called Leap Motion. Uh, not to be confused with Magic Leap, a completely different company. Um, so, about in 20, I think, believe 2013, uh, company Magic Leap started with a Kickstarter, which I got. It looks like this here. It's a little uh, device, a user interface device for hand tracking. And what you do is you, I've got two of them here, let me show you. It's basically a USB device. You stick it into your PC and sit it in the front of it, and two infrared blasters shoot up, and then you can uh, control your desktop or whatever software you're using with motions. So when I tried this out, in, I believe in 2014 first, you know, I was using Windows and I was a little frustrated with it because it's Windows is not made to use this type of interface, right? So I was trying to close screens touching them, but the little X's weren't so good. And you can swipe from books and home pages, and I was doing this to scroll up and down web pages and whatnot. But I remember very uh, uniquely that this experience was not very good, especially in a Windows setting. But um, very soon after, you could pair it up with, people were pairing them up with headsets like this for hand tracking because now, now you, you're in a VR space and you can use them to track your hands. So you can mount it on the front of a VR headset kind of like this. So it would act as your kind of physical eyes and now you can kind of use hand gestures inside the VR space. And we first saw this um, in TEDx Kyoto 2014, one of our partners, Fuji Xerox, and our uh, interactive media team, which I lead, um, worked together on a sort of a project to have a VR space and play a simple card game where you touch cards and move them back and forth. So you can play a, a virtual card game with using your hands and gestures. So this video is actually from 2014 when they were demoing this technology. So now we have the hand tracking combined with uh, VR head tracking in a space. So this actually makes more sense, right? The Windows, I was frustrated with that experience because it was it was made for a mouse not hand gestures, but the VR sense, it's going to be harder to hold a mouse and you want to be able to move around freely. But what Leap Motion just put out yesterday is this something called Project North Star. Now, before you get too excited, uh, this is not intended to be a consumer product. Uh, it will be a, uh, it'll be the plans for it and the software and the SDK will all be released open source, which means if you're a developer and if you want to put together one of these on your own, you can and start messing around with it. And as a researcher in this technology, this is very exciting because it'll be cheap and you can kind of make this stuff from the ground up. It's a learning experience as well. So this is almost the same as the VR experience, right? So instead of being in a completely virtual environment and tracking your hands as a user interface, you're actually looking at the real world, sitting at a desk perhaps, and your hand gestures are now uh, manipulating virtual objects in mixed reality. So you can have a screen, This you can imagine the, the infamous minority report with Tom Cruise that he's doing like this. So images are being projected in your eyes, but you're able to see the real world, and now you're able to manipulate those virtual objects with hand recognition. You can see on the top here, you can, there is a perhaps a upgraded version of this motion leap embedded in the top of this display. And this goes along with what I've been talking about a lot recently with this move to the phone on the face. So uh, our mobile communications have been put in our pockets thanks to smartphones, but slowly I believe we're going to start putting that stuff around our bodies and our wrists and on our faces. And this is a good example of that. So there's been a lot of other news, of course. Magic Leap announced their Magic Leap 1. Uh, there's also the Microsoft HoloLens and a couple of other mixed reality devices. But those are quite different. 
uh, the main difference being that those are made to track the environment, right? We It, it tracks the uh, geometry of a room, the objects in front of you, and then you can place virtual items on them. Great for something like a, maybe a Pokemon Go. This can't do that so much, track the environment. But what it can do really well is track your hand movements, because this is what Magic Leap, or Ma um, Leap Motion, I'm going to get this confused as well, concentrates on. So when you put these together, um, you have a see-through, uh, kind of like a projected lens, going to project some items onto it, and the hand tracking and a couple of cameras is going to look at the environment and then place virtual items in front of you. And now your hands are able to kind of manipulate those in real time. And here's an example of some of the videos that have been coming out recently and they kind of blew me away. <clears throat> Number one, this hand tracking seems very good. He's, you notice he's moving the cube around in 3D in real time. But more than this, what's impressive is this idea of occlusion. And it's a big issue, a big problem with developing augmented reality and mixed reality stuff. Um, you need to sense depth and align that with the objects around them. So usually in the first, my uh, AR projects orientation that I've been developing for learning and teaching, it when you point maybe, let's say, a, a mobile, mobile device with AR in it at an object, it'll place it on top of it move it around and interact with it in three in um, real time, but it's always over it, right? So let's say this is my virtual item and I put my hand in front of it, the, that overlay will still appear like it's in front of this, this hand. It doesn't know how to deal with that depth so much. And if you can see, he's moving his hand through the cube and that's dealing with that occlusion um, challenge very well. There's another example here. Um, I believe it's the same developer. So now he's tracking his hand and he's knowing what side of the hand he's looking on because of the position of the thumb probably. And now he's using his other hand and the depth sensing as well to have sort of a virtual wearable device. And now he's looking at his hand and he can pull out information and it attracts it in real time. Now, it looks great from this angle, but I understand that Looking at it from afar, you're going to have this big, goofy um, contraption on your head to get this view out of your head. So he's probably looking through a camera as well through this. So you put a couple of these together, right? So now up on the top, you can see he's moving his hand, and but that's tracking it how, and what that looks like in 3D time. So what we first started doing was in the 3D space. And this is a great example of where I believe this is going, right? So actually, the, probably the end all be all of it is you want both, right? You want to be able to track your hands and manipulate things very quickly and easily. But you also want to be able to uh, have that device understand the environment where you are. You probably need some GPS sensors some internal locators and combine those together. But if you're going to be sitting down in a space and doing some work or maybe experimenting in the classroom with some things, I believe this might be an actually better solution for learning maybe things also like uh, augmented mixed reality surgery, perhaps um, uh, any anything that has to work with technical training perhaps when you're looking at a jet engine and you want to know how your hands are going to manipulate that product virtually, you can mess around with a bunch of things like that. So. <clears throat> I'm, although, once again, you can't buy this, and you probably won't be able to, but all the plans and the software is becoming publicly available, open source. That's very exciting. So that they say you'll be able to build one for around $100 US. We'll see if that's true. Um, if I get a hold of the plans, I very much hope to try and build one of these myself and experiment with it. And if you'd like to join me, um, our orientation.com is my augmented reality page. Ready Teacher One is my techie in um, teaching and learning blog, or you can find me at erichawkinson.com. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye bye.